this is a video for class 7 geography and today I shall begin with a new topic that is weather instruments. So, so far in geography we have covered three topics that is atmosphere, weather and climate and Africa and this is our fourth topic that is weather instruments. Okay, now we already have discussed in detail and learnt vigorously about weather and its elements in the chapter weather and climate. Okay, we have studied in detail about all the atmospheric elements like air temperature, air pressure, wind direction, wind speed, humidity. Okay, all these are nothing but elements of weather or atmosphere. Alright, and in this chapter, we will study about various instruments, various intricate instruments that are used to measure these atmospheric elements. Now, the art of predicting weather or learning about climate is not new. Okay, it existed even during the ancient times. But during those times, the prediction was not accurate. The data was not completely reliable. But nowadays, because of development in science and technology, we have developed or evolved our weather instruments about which we shall study today. Okay? Now, the art and the science of studying about weather and predicting weather is referred to as meteorology. Okay? So, the entire science that deals with studying weather and climate is referred to as Meteorology. Then the scientists or the people, the learned people who are involved in studying weather vigorously, who are involved in predicting weather continuously are referred to as meteorologists. So the study is meteorology. The people involved in it are known as meteorologists. Then now, how is weather predicted? How is weather recorded? There is a place called weather station. Okay, now a weather station can be the entire institution or the place that has all the instruments to record a weather and that can be termed as weather station or there will be a small model or small instrument like this which will have all the other instruments installed on it. Like there will be a wind vane to predict the or find out the wind direction. There will be a small thermometer. There will be a small hydrometer to measure humidity. So when few instruments are fitted together, that also can be referred to as a tiny mini weather station. Okay, so you'll have an entire institution where there'll be many people working to predict weather, to forecast weather. That is a weather station. And then you'll have a small model, an instrument like this. That also can be termed as a weather station. Okay, now in Goa, we have a weather station at Penjim, which is known as the IMD. That is the Indian Meteorological Department. So that is the department that predicts or forecasts weather for Goa. Then we have something also called as weather ships and weather balloons in order to record the weather conditions. Okay. Now weather ships are huge ocean vessels, ships like this which are positioned in the sea or an open ocean. Okay, so those places in the sea which are quite inaccessible, there the weather is mostly recorded with the help of these weather ships. Okay, and the instruments, all high-end, high-tech instruments are installed on these particular ships. There, there will be many technicians, meteorologists continuously working on the weather data. And they transmit the data back on the land station or the ground station via radio. Okay, so there is continuous communication between these weather ships and the ground station. These ships also help the aviation sector. Okay, and they also help the other ships which pass through the ocean or pass along the ocean. 
Then, this is a weather balloon. Okay, it's a balloon which is filled with hydrogen gas, which is a little bit cheaper, lighter gas. And at the bottom of the balloon, there'll be certain devices that are fixed in order to record the atmospheric elements. Okay, so this is done mostly early in the morning around 3.30, 4 or 4.30. So what is done is, in this balloon, hydrogen gas is filled. Certain weather data recording instruments are erected or installed at the bottom of the balloon, which are very, very light. Okay. Then this balloon is readily left into the atmosphere, into the air. It slowly rises in the air and keeps on giving data on the ground station. It keeps on transmit, transmitting data on the ground station. Okay, so that's a weather balloon. Then we also have weather satellites. Okay, we know what are satellites. These are again high-end instruments which are positioned around the earth in the earth's orbit. Okay, so these satellites, they continuously move about or revolve around the earth. They take pictures of the earth. They record certain type of data of the earth and send it back on the ground station. Okay, so they can record data like cloud cover. There will be satellites which will continuously take picture of the cloud cover and send the image back on the earth. Then satellite images or satellite data also helps to predict the movement of cyclones or typhoons. Okay, they can tell us when these uh, cyclones or typhoons will enter the continental areas. Okay, it, they can also help in predicting the direction of these cyclones. So satellites come very, very handy, very, very useful in terms of weather prediction. Okay, now we'll see one by one few instruments which are used for weather data or climatic data calculations or measurement. Okay, the first commonly used instrument is thermometer. And we have studied about temperature previously. Temperature is nothing but how hot or cold the air is or how cold or hot the atmosphere is. So to measure the air conditions, to measure the degree of hotness and coldness, we use a thermometer. This is a very commonly used clinical thermometer. Okay, so it has this glass bore or a glass tube and there's a bulb at the bottom that is filled with mercury okay so whenever there is rise in temperature mercury will also rise and give a certain reading whenever the temperature falls whenever it becomes cool mercury level also comes down and the temperature can be recorded okay so this is a commonly used clinical thermometer then we use two types of scales or two units to measure temperature that is Fahrenheit and Celsius. Okay, Fahrenheit scale was invented by uh, Andreas or Daniel Fahrenheit and Celsius scale was in invented by Ender Celsius. Okay, so this was invented by Daniel Fahrenheit and Celsius scale was invented by Ender's Celsius. Okay. Now in India, we commonly used degree Celsius scale. We hardly use Fahrenheit. Mostly in Europe and around Americas in western part of the world, people prefer using the degree Fahrenheit scale. Okay. Now in a Fahrenheit scale, the boiling point is, boiling point of water is 212 degrees Celsius while the melting point is 32 degrees Fahrenheit, okay, 212 degrees Fahrenheit and 32 degrees Fahrenheit. While in the Celsius scale, the boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius, while the melting point is 0 degrees Celsius. Then, another very accurate way of measuring temperature of a place 
is the 6s maximum and minimum thermometer this particular device is named after the meteorologist or scientist james 6 okay and that's why it's known as the 6s maximum and minimum thermometer so in this particular thermometer you have two bores or two tubes one that records maximum temperature one that records minimum temperature so daily highest temperature and daily lowest temperature is recorded by this maximum and minimum thermometer now these thermometers specially 6s maximum and minimum thermometer cannot be just fixed or installed anywhere and everywhere to measure the temperature okay this particular device which is known as stevenson screen is used to install the thermometer okay so in this particular screen the thermometer is kept inside okay and this is painted white so that heat can be easily reflected off the surface then it has many gaps in it so that there is free movement of air okay and it is placed approximately 1.5 meters above the surface okay and it is placed away from the trees or away from the buildings so that the reading can be as accurate as possible so this entire screen or this device into which 6s maximum and minimum thermometer is fixed is known as the stevenson's screen okay here's another picture which shows you how it looks like okay then we also have an automatic temperature recording device which is known as a thermograph okay so here is a thermograph it has a drum that has graph papers on it so as the temperature is changing and fluctuating the drum also rotates and there'll be a dial which will continuously keep on giving you readings of temperature so this automatic device where temperature can be recorded is known as a thermograph now once the temperature of a place is largely recorded it can be shown in a pictorial form in the form of a picture on a map with the help of isotherms okay isotherms are used to show temperature conditions of a place on a map specifically on a weather map okay for example here's the outline map of america and these lines that you see here these lines that run through the map they are your isotherms so isotherms are lines that join areas of equal temperature okay so for example this particular isotherm shows the reading minus 6 degrees celsius okay so all those places through which this particular line passes through has the temperature minus 6 degrees celsius okay so these are imaginary lines lines drawn on, drawn on a map to give us an idea of how the temperature conditions at the particular place at a particular state or a country look like okay so in simple words isotherms are the lines on a map joining areas of equal air temperature okay so here's another isotherm joining areas having the temperature minus 1 degree celsius here's another one that joins areas that have temperature 4 degree celsius and then you have another one here that joins areas having 15 degree celsius so these are smooth free flowing lines okay and they never cut into each other two isotherms never cut into each other they are all independent of each other 
then here is the map of india and here also there are some series of isotherms for example in north india there is an isotherm running here with a value 10 degrees celsius okay so it joins the areas that have the temperature conditions of 10 degrees celsius then here in south india there is another isotherm here that has the value 25 degrees celsius so all these places wherever it passes through has the temperature conditions that are about 25 degrees celsius okay here is another map which shows some isotherms on the world map okay all these red lines are the isotherms then the second instrument that we have here is a barometer now a barometer is a device that is used to measure the air pressure all right so a barometer is like a metal box like this okay and then it has a lid that covers the entire box inside there is no air the lid is fixed on the barometer by making it completely air tight okay and this particular lid that covers the barometer this particular lid that covers the barometer is very sensitive to the temperature sorry pressure changes okay so whenever there are changes in the pressure this particular lid that covers it that also moves up and down okay so whenever the pressure is high the lid will be pushed downwards and the barograph will give a reading when the pressure is high or when the pressure is low the lid will move upwards and again there are dials that will give you a proper reading okay so whenever this lid moves up and down these levers or these pointers also move giving the approximate reading okay now this particular barograph doesn't give 100% accuracy but it gives some idea about the pressure conditions of a particular place okay barograph is a device that can automatically record the air pressure okay aneroid just like aneroid barometer we have a barograph for measuring temperature we have a thermograph similarly for pressure we have a barograph okay so just like a thermograph the drum continuously rotates containing the graph paper there will be a pointer that will continuously keep on recording the pressure changes or pressure fluctuations okay here's another picture of a barograph then what are isobars just like isotherms we have isobars these are the lines drawn on a map joining areas of equal air pressure okay so here's now the the unit that is used for measuring air pressure is millibars okay so these are the lines that will join areas having equal air pressure so here's an isobar that joins areas having the pressure conditions of 996 millibars here's another isobar joining areas having the pressure conditions 1000 millibars okay so here here are another series of isobars here's one that joins areas having 979 millibars air pressure okay here is another one that joins areas having 999 millibars okay so these are nothing but lines joining areas of equal air pressure okay and these comes these come really really helpful while finding the pressure conditions and also wind direction okay we know that wind always blows from high to low pressure regions so here the value is 979 mb and here the value is 999 mb so here the pressure conditions are high and here there is low so the wind will blow from this region to this particular point because here the pressure is low 
Okay, here's another map of North America where you see series of isobars joining areas of equal pressure. Then, the next instrument that we have here in this chapter is an anemometer. Okay, an anemometer is a device that is used to measure the wind velocity or the wind speed. Okay, it measures wind velocity in kilometers or knots per hour. Say for example, 60 kilometers per hour like that, the anemometer records the wind speed. Alright, so it has these cups that continuously rotate. Okay, and there's a device here at the bottom that records the number of rotations and the speed with which the rotation happens on top okay so these continuously move when the wind blows okay when the air moves and there's an instrument here at the bottom that records the number of rotations and speed which helps in calculating the wind speed okay and that's a anemometer okay here's another picture how it actually looks like Then, we have something called as an anemograph. Okay, now, an anemograph is an automatic device, again, to measure the wind speed. Just like the thermograph, barograph, this is an anemograph, which continuously keeps on recording the wind speed on a graph paper. Then, related to wind, we have another instrument that is a wind vane. A wind vane is used to find out the wind direction. Okay, and this is how it looks like. It has this vertical spindle and it has an arrow attached to it on top. Okay, the pointed part is known as its nose or arrow and the backmost part or the end part is known as its back point. Okay, so you have the arrow and the back point or the tail all right so this arrow continuously points in the direction from which the wind is blowing say for example if the wind is blowing from eastern direction the arrow will face towards the east if the wind is blowing from the western side it will point towards the west okay plus it has these direction arrows or crosses permanently attached to it Okay, so you can clearly make out that this particular arrow is pointing towards north. Okay, so these arrows help or help you or it becomes very, very handy to have a look at the wind direction. And that's a wind vane. Another device that we have here, another weather instrument device is a hygrometer. Okay, a hygrometer is used to calculate humidity of a particular place. Okay, humidity is nothing but moisture or the water vapor in the air. So that is calculated with the help of a hygrometer. Okay, just like the sixes maximum and minimum thermometer, it has two bows, two tubes which are fixed on this particular dial. Alright, a wooden dial. Or a plastic dial, one bulb here, one bow here will be completely free. It is uncovered and then there will be another bulb here that is covered with cotton moist cloth which is partially here immersed in water. Okay, so one bulb, one bulb here is uncovered, it is exposed to the air while the other bulb is covered by a cotton cloth which is dipped in water. So whenever air moves or air blows or wind blows, the water here evaporates and the temperature decreases. Okay, so this particular dry bulb thermometer, it will record a temperature higher than this particular wet bulb thermometer. Okay, and that's why hygrometer is also referred to as wet and dry bulb thermometer because it has a dry bulb and then it has a wet bulb. Then the recorded differences are calculated which further help us in understanding the amount of water vapor or 
humidity in the air. Then we have an automatic device that can directly calculate the humidity in the air and that's known as a hygrograph. And then the last device that we have here is a rain gauge. Okay, rain gauge is a device or instrument that is used to measure the rainfall or the amount of rainfall at a particular place. Okay, so how this particular instrument works, it has the cylinder, okay, it can be a metal cylinder or a glass cylinder and inside the cylinder, there's a funnel here, okay, if you can see here, there's a funnel here. So whenever it rains heavily, the funnel collects the water and directs it inside the cylinder. After a particular point, maybe at the end of the day, this cylinder is removed and emptied in this measuring flask. Okay, so you have a separate device besides the main device which is helped or which is used to measure the amount of rainfall that has taken place during a particular point of time. Okay, so water gets collected here after a particular point. Once you want to see the amount of rainfall that has occurred, you can empty the contents here in the measuring flask and you can measure or see the reading. Okay, rainfall is measured in millimeters. Now, the imaginary lines on the map drawn joining areas of equal rainfall are referred to as iso heights. Okay, so isotherms are for temperature isobars are for pressure and then we have iso heights for rainfall. So these are the lines that join areas of equal rainfall. For example, this particular iso height has the value 150. So all these areas have received the rainfall amounting to 150 millimeters. Okay. Here's another isotherm that join areas receiving rainfall 100 millimeters. Okay, so like this, all these weather instruments work and help us in predicting or forecasting the weather accurately.